Speaker, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me. Let's start with the incident uh, on the day of the State of the Province address. Now, it was to be addressed by the Premier uh, of the province, uh, but we saw those ugly scenes uh, where there was this exchange and the scuffle between EFF, MPLs, and uh, security staff there. From your perspective, what happened? Why did they have to be kicked out, the uh, EFF, MPLs? Well, obviously, I think we must uh, put into context that in every of the, all of the legislatures and the provincial and the NCOP, all of them have got um, a dress code for members' policies that basically govern the conduct of members as well as the dress code. And the purpose of those policies basically is to maintain the dignity and the quorum of the legislature. The applicability of the policies are not only for members, it is also for the officials, it is those for serving us in the House, it is for all those uh, that are coming into the House, the government departments, the organs of state. Um, so the policy's applicability is broad. And the EFF has been trying on numerous occasions to have this policy reviewed. And all other political parties have in the policy subcommittee voted against it. In the rules committee have agreed not to endorse any amendment to the policy. So it is about a policy that expressly says that what is applicable in terms of the dress code, how you may dress. And it does not only confine itself to gumboots and to overalls. We are not allowed to dress uh, bare um, arms in the legislature. We are not allowed to wear floppies, T-shirts, tracksuit pants, cargo pants, techies. Uh, all of these kind of things are, are detailed in the policy, and they are quite aware of this. So, uh, Speaker, then, did this, is this a new policy? Because the EFF has been in national politics at least since 2014. What has brought no. this to a head now? This, this is the unfortunate thing. This policy has been there for a very, very long time. It was in 2018 again. They asked 2017, 2017, they asked for a review of the policy. They went through the sewing process in the House. Um, and then on the 28th, uh, 2018, in October, um, the members agreed again on, on the revised policy, upholding the policy. The policy was again last year coming into the sixth term. They again asked for a review of the policy. It has gone through the same process and with the same outcome. So they are quite aware of the policy. And the policy is not only applicable to the house setting. It is also applicable to the committee room. All right. And they are consistently being taken out of the committee rooms because they are not appropriately dressed. Let me ask you then, someone comparing what happens at the National Assembly um, and, and, and National Parliament and the other provincial legislatures in the other eight provinces where members of the EFF, um, despite the presence of these rules, I suppose the calculation is in as much as the rules, and I know the National Assembly, Assembly rules do speak to the issue of dress code as well, but I suppose the calculation is do you then chuck them out and keep them out despite the fact that they are actually elected representatives who have a constituency that they represent. Why is the Eastern Cape uh, so rigorous in the application of these rules despite the trend elsewhere being to allow this to happen? Well, I, I think it comes from the fact that all legislatures have adopted their unique dress code policies. Um, my understanding is that no presiding officer where you can sit can just decide I am not going to implement a policy and a rule of the legislature. The national do not have the same policies. They, uh, they remember in the past they did not have these prescribed policies like the legislature said. We have a very prescriptive policy that basically says this is the applicable dress code and this is not allowed and this can be allowed. Ours is very, very detailed. The national has never had anything such as so, the Eastern Cape legislature. So to the so people... Each and every legislature yeah. will come up with their applicable dress code that suits their circumstances. Yes, they are elected, but they must then comply to the policies of the legislature. And they know this very well. So in the they have not attended any meetings for since last year, since we had the incident last year. They have not attended any house sitting, refusing if they cannot come. So coming to the house on the state of the province, knowing the dress code is there, knowing that the multi-party whip reset before 
the uh, state of the province address and agreed that the dress code must be applicable. So in the absence of their compliance, uh, Speaker... political parties agreed on the process. So in the absence of their compliance with the policy, the dress code policy, what do we tell the people that 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 voted for the EFF then, that tough luck, you can't be represented because your uh, representatives um, refused to comply by a dress code policy? And if, if that's the answer... What is the impact on our multi-party democracy then? Well, I think that that is, that, that is the whole issue of democracy, that the EFF must ask themselves that if there are democratic processes and policies in place, if processes have gone through a democratic process, and just because the view of the EFF cannot be upheld, does it mean that the EFF is going to be allowed to do as they wish in a house? That then you ask yourself, why would legislatures come up and have policies? Would it then make the policies in totality redundant? That people, can, are we at the phase in democracy where we must say legislatures, they must, these policies have become redundant and obsolete? And I think in a democratic process, you will have this to and fro, but then we must deal with each other in a respectful manner. You cannot have violence and, and uh, incite violence onto the legislature staff onto the members of the legislature just because your view could not be upheld in a policy review committee or in the rules committee. And then lastly, uh, uh, Speaker, let me ask you about that aspect of violence, the conduct of the uh, security in the legislature. Are you totally satisfied that they were within the bounds of the law? Because the, the danger here, Speaker, and I don't think I need to highlight it for you, is that if we allow violence to happen inside uh, you know, chambers where we are supposed to settle our differences uh, democratically, it has a chilling effect on our democracy, doesn't it? Well, we condemn the violence perpetrated by the EFF NPLs because the videos clearly show that the staff of the legislature did not even um, hit them. They were, in fact, abusing and hitting our legislature staff. We were just trying to get them to move out of the legislature. The same were their supporters who stormed the, the gallery and did the same thing to the, to the staff who sprayed the members of the legislature sitting there with jig or a substance that burned their faces, burned their arms, they basically destroyed their clothes. This is the kind of things that they did that day. And we cannot condone those kind of hooliganism and those violence perpetrated. Our internal security were within their rights to remove them. There is no rule that says our staff is entitled to hit a member, and that has not been done. Right. Uh, Speaker Helen Sauls August, I really appreciate you coming through and defending your actions and actually uh, speaking about them and justifying them within the rules of the provincial legislature in the Eastern Cape there. It's unlike what has happened in the Northwest where we did see similar scenes. And to this day, we are wait for that justification because if you've acted within the rules and you are confident as Speaker Helen Sauls August is, you are able to then stand up on a national platform and defend your actions.